Rage. Rage against the dying of the light. Boy, that dog pack video sure has been causing controversy. But the irony is that the, like, most easily provable part of the entire thing, you know, that Mr. Beast videos are fake, is you know, simultaneously painfully obvious and yet extremely violating. I watched my first Mr. Beast video a few months ago, and I can tell you that when looking at that stupid spike pit, I certainly did not think that it was supposed to be real. Then again, I am 30. My point is, if you go into this conversation to quibble about whether or not Mr. Beast videos are real, you're missing the point. We should instead be asking why fans and even casual observers of Mr. Beast content can at the same time defend those videos as true, need them to be true, and at the same time have it be just like clearly obvious that they're not. Let's not pretend that CGI was ever fooling anybody. And this strange liminal space that we find ourselves in culturally, a space where Mr. Beast dominates the platform with content that is believed to be true and yet is painfully, obviously not. This is the post-truth cultural space. So let's talk about it. But before I do, hello! My name is Richard, the channel is called New Memphis, and I am so glad that you could be here today. The first thing to note is that this cultural space is not in any, any way unique to YouTube. Post-truth thinking already dominates both sides of American politics. When you talk about fact-checking a debate, how do you fact-check someone who just doesn't make sense? I think that there's a lot of people more concerned about being factually and semantically correct than about being morally right. It dominates in finance and in tech. I don't uh, have a clip for this example, but I always think back to when Sam Bankman fried said that FTX would be a place to invest, buy Bitcoin or a banana, whatever. And then they gave him tens of millions of dollars. And even the rise of large language models, amalgamated content masquerading as AI, mimics this larger social phenomenon. Post-truth thinking is believing that what is true is what we agree to be true. Truth becomes an amalgamation of what is seen as true. And that may sound synonymous with like just truth, with just being true, but any number of AI generated videos and pictures will show that the amalgamation of what something is believed to be is not the same as what it is. And post-truth thinking devolves into being just a, a string of individual beliefs and thoughts strung together with as much structure as the otherworldly physics of an AI generated video. But let's bring this back to Mr. Beast. Today, the narrative is that his videos are true. Tomorrow, it might be that his videos are mostly true, but enhanced for flavor. The day after that, we know his videos are false, but there's a collective sunk cost fallacy, so we all know, but we don't really want to admit it, and that's just okay. The next day, we all agree that charity can never be evil, and anyone who says otherwise is just being a hater. And then the next day, we just all think his videos are real again. And each day's individual thoughts are tied together with as much structure as the individual frames of an AI-generated video. The narrative is just whatever it needs to be to justify where we are in this individual particular frame. And what the narrative will be in the next frame, what our thoughts will be tomorrow, will be the amalgamation of what we believe they should be. What will be true will be what we agree to be true at the time. In this cultural space, truth no longer matters, if you weren't already putting that together. And that's why I said earlier that arguing over whether or not Mr. Beast videos are real is missing the point. Millions upon millions of young people are convinced that whatever particular group think they're engaged in on a particular day simply becomes true because they believe it's true, like they're the fucking orcs from 40k. This is how societal collapse happens. This is how. This is how. And if I'm saying it's a larger societal issue, is any of this actually Jimmy's fault? In, ter in terms of where we are broadly, eh, probably not. He's just some rich loser who likes spending money. When the views stop coming or he gets replaced by someone with less personality, he'll blow through all of his cash in a week and spend the rest of his life rolling from town to town doing odd jobs and meet and greets for pennies like the next generation's Nicolas Cage. What we should be asking is why does our society habitually reward people who treat the truth as malleable? 
why does our content demand bombastic imagery that you know is fake? How did we get here? I genuinely don't know. This is actually... This is actually a really, really hard subject to think about. I, please don't think I'm trying to diminish that here. This is really difficult shit. Personally, I just think it has to do with like what is profitable and with the culture of our leadership. You know, like make the biggest game show ever, but it's so much cheaper not to. We wanna fight for civil rights, but that's hard. So let's make up something safe that we generally actually agree upon that we can just kind of quibble about online and say it's a battle for civil rights. And all the while, the light gets a little bit lower with every generation. Here we are. God, I need to finish this beer. Anyway, be sure to let me know what you guys think in the comment section. I am genuinely interested to hear. I need another beer. See you in the next one.